This video is proudly sponsored by Gamersgate. Download games anytime, anywhere. Visit Gamersgate.com. Hey, welcome to Elder Geeks, Elder Speaks. Today's Monday, June 24th, 2013. My name is Randy Asenchak. I'm the editor of ElderGeek.com. I wanted to talk to everybody today, or at least kind of put this video to get together today, to speak about a topic that's been bothering me for a little while now, and it's, and it's been bothering me ever since the announcement of the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Now, I don't want this to turn into some type of video where I'm going to be demonizing one or the other or both, or demonizing Sony or Microsoft. I, I want to kind of call to light a different issue that is, let's just say it's being exacerbated by this newer generation of consoles. Okay? Now, this is not me saying that I don't love the new console generation, and I'm not picking any sides in any type of console war here or anything like that. Uh, this is this is just me kind of, like I said, I want to, I want to bring light, I want to bring attention to to an issue that exists within our within this medium that we all enjoy, video games. Um, it is important for everyone to preserve their heritage. It's ever, it's important for everybody to preserve their past, and. All mediums go through this. All mediums have this. You know, uh, books, you, you can go to libraries and you can go to archives and you can dig up books that are hundreds and, you know, thousands of years old if you wanted to. If, if, a, if a book has been written, it is almost guaranteed that somewhere somebody has a copy of it in its original form and it's probably obtainable at the public level. Same thing with music. You know, there are tons of radio stations out there that continue to play you know, older music, classic music, if you wanted to, you could listen to, to music going back, again, hundreds of years. Uh, same thing with film. You can go to film societies and you can dig up older movies. You can, um, you can do the same thing with television. Heck, with film and television, if you really wanted to, and you, you wanted to find an older film or an older TV show that you happened to enjoy when you were younger, or even something that you enjoyed that was a classic to your parents when they were younger, you can go to the, you know, you can go to a store, you can go to Amazon, you can probably buy it and download it and, and watch it, or you can probably go out and buy a DVD of it and watch it. You can watch it almost in the original medium that it existed back then. You could find a cathode ray tube television, you could watch it on a cathode ray tube television, and you can get the same experience as, as the, the first time it was experienced to that crowd. With books, it's the same way. You can, you can open a book and read it as it existed on the pages. With, with music, you can Put a record onto a record player and hear sounds as they were meant to be heard or as they, as they were recorded for the very first time. But we don't really have that with video games. We're, we, we run that danger. And it's kind of important for us to remember our roots because, you know, it, it, you, it's the best way to appreciate where you are right now. It's the best way to learn from your mistakes by knowing where you've been, where, you're, where your medium is from. Now, we, we run into this problem twofold. One, you know, when, when you think back to 20 years ago, even 30 years ago, um, we're running into the problem of arcade machines, where the arcade machines need upkeep, and, and they, they require quite a bit of upkeep. Certainly, there are some key people out there who are uh, doing a great job of, of making new parts for older machines, but almost every machine was custom-built to that, to that game at the time, so it's a, it's, a tough, it's a tough thing to keep up with. Um... And at the same time, a lot of the games that were created back then, the company that created them might not be in existence anymore. So it's almost up to the people out there to to gather up this information and to retain it and make it enjoyable for future generations. But there's no official... Well, there is almost no official um, place to preserve everything like this. I'm not calling for, like, a, a, a video game museum, though I would definitely not be above that. I think I think a video game museum would be awesome. But I'm kind of calling more for a set of standards. Now, a lot of people out there who are kind of curious, you know, if there are any organizations out there that do that. Yeah, there, there are. The Independent Game uh, Developers Association actually has a preservation uh, segment of their, of their, you know, society. So I'll throw up a link for them if anybody is interested, but check that out. But the reason why I was bringing this up now in, in you know, why the current generation has, has made me think about this is because the next generation of consoles is not backwards compatible. Uh, I'll get to my full point on that in a minute. Um, everybody knows that I, I do a lot of the reviews for us here on ElderGeek.com. I, I, um, I would say I would do a majority of the video reviews on ElderGeek.com, but I'm not always reviewing games. There, there are times when I do have some downtime that I like to play some classic games 
or I, I shouldn't even say classic games. I like to play some of my favorite games again and again and again because it's just it's just fun. It's relaxing to me, and it's always kind of nice to play a good game to kind of wash the mediocrity out of your mouth in between you know two bad games or two mediocre games. Uh, it's always always kind of fun to go back to old classics. But uh, I had a thought the other day, and it, when I had the thought, it seemed strange to me, and I didn't realize why it seemed strange to me. I thought to myself, I'm, you know, now with this next generation of console games coming out, I'm going to play Red Dead Redemption for the last time. And, you know, and, and I, I thought it, and I was like, I'm going to enjoy this, I'm going to enjoy playing this again, but the thought was, I'm going to play this the last time. And... I didn't realize why that stuck out as kind of a strange thing to say until I really thought about it, that, uh, you know, the, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, out of the shelf lives of all of the consoles out there, probably has the shortest shelf life out there. You know, with the Xbox 360s, you know, they red ring like crazy, and PlayStation 3s are, are they're not very innocent either. Out of all the people that I know um, that own PlayStation 3s, we have all had our PlayStation 3's yellow light on us. I, I have had mine yellow light on me, and you know the same thing can be said for Xbox 360's. I don't know anybody, aside from myself. I consider myself very lucky, who has not had their 360 red ring on them. And you think to yourself, so what? You buy a new console and you move on. Um, but how long are we going to have new 360's being processed, you know, or created? How long are we going to have more PlayStation 3's created? Most likely, we're going to be seeing it over the next five years. Most likely. But they're going to become rarer and rarer to come across. And the likelihood of you being able to play your games on the medium that they were intended to be played on is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That can't really be said with some of the classic generations. I still have my NES. I still have an Atari you know, at home with my parents. I still have my SNES. I still have my N64. All of those work great. Even my PlayStation 1 still runs and if it you know it doesn't run on a PlayStation 1 you can still play that game on the PlayStation 3 and run it exactly as it existed on the PlayStation 1 you know there might be a few exceptions to the rule that they don't run but um so the PlayStation 3s and the Xbox 360s have these this terrible short shelf life and you know as they die off i don't think i'm going to be replacing this this console and repairing them is is not as simple as repairing, say, a Super Nintendo or a Nintendo Entertainment System or a Genesis. Um, that was part one that kind of scared me about it. Part two, what kind of scared me about all of this was, uh, was the fact that all of the games that exist in, in a digital medium on those two consoles, uh, they, they run a gigantic risk right now of going away forever. Um, it... If, if I was a developer, and I created a game that existed solely on the PlayStation Network, or solely on Xbox Live Arcade, or Xbox Live Indie Gameplays, or whatever they're called, I would do everything within my power to port it over to the PC. Because the PC, this is not some master race, you know, kind of, oh, you know, PC gamers are the greatest. But the PC has almost a self-preserving society out there. You know, classic games, you can, you can go out and buy classic games and still play them brand new. If you have a disc in your in your closet of the of an original game, um, you can fire it up and, and play it. And if it doesn't work, you could probably find someone online who has taken the time to to create some workaround. If there was if there's some ancient DRM on on a, on a classic game, there there might be somebody somebody out there who would find a way to to overpass that ancient DRM and be able to play the game. But there, that's not going to exist, or at least not yet. It doesn't exist yet with the PlayStation Network and, and Xbox Live Arcade. Now, Microsoft has come forward and said that they're going to try to do their best to come up with a way to play the games that you've already paid for on Xbox Live Arcade. But that doesn't seem like enough. I, I almost would want like a guarantee. I would almost want like a, a yes, this will definitely happen. We are going to continue to support this. And I would want the same thing from Sony as well. I want them to come forward and say, yes, we are going to continue to offer the games that you've already paid for and you can just download them right away, but we, but we don't have that yet. What happens to all of those games when, you know, maybe it's not going to happen in the next five years, but maybe in the next ten years, when all of those games stop being supported, when those servers that are hosting those games stop being supported? They're gone. There's no physical backup of them anywhere. There's no, there's not going to be a, a you know, a preservation society within, um, you know, the PC marketplace where people are going to be able to play them and, and everything like that. 
there might, and this is not me, you know, saying that pirating is, is a good thing to do or that emulation is a good thing to do, but one of the one of the best chances at the moment for it being accessible for future generations is if somebody were to create an emulator and, you know, gather all of those games and make them playable. That seems terrible to me. There should be preset rules set in place. There should be preset backups in place so that future generations can enjoy these games. So that and if I was a if I was a game developer or if I was a publisher, I would want future generations to actually be able to buy my games. Um, I, I'm, I'm just thinking of a pile of games that exist solely on the Xbox Live Arcade or on PlayStation Network that do not exist on, on PC, where in the next, oh, actually within the next couple of months, when the, when the next generation of consoles come out, those sales are probably going to kind of hit a brick wall, when people are going to say, yeah, I'm not going to buy a game on this network that's not going to be support, or that I'm not going to be using anymore. So that's why I had that strange thought about Red Dead Redemption. Unlike Rockstar's other titles, like Grand Theft Auto 4 and L.A. Noir, those titles are available to purchase and play on PC, and people will be playing them for generations and generations to come. But Red Dead Redemption and its DLC Undead Nightmare, while they do exist in a physical medium, they still exist on these two consoles that don't have a backwards compatibility plan with its, with its you know, succeeding console. And they exist on a console system that is really likely to break. And that kind of creeps me out. It's Red Dead Redemption, most of all, because I, I truly feel it's one of the best games of this generation. And I think that if you haven't tried it yet, you need to go out and try it. But the fact that it, it runs this, this really creepy risk of disappearing forever, I feel like is, is a crime to the entire medium. That's, that's the, the sum of my my story. Sorry if it took on a little bit long, but I, I do think that it's something that people should be concerned about, people should be talking about, and people should be telling other people about, and saying, hey, we need to do something to preserve the games that we have. Whether they are classic arcade games, whether they are, you know, our NESs and our SNESs, or if they are something that exists only on a digital medium, like the Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network, there needs to be something in place that preserves those games for future generations to, to play on. And again, if I if I made a game, or if I sold a game, or if I wrote a game, or something like that, I would do everything within my power to take those games over as soon as possible and put them onto good old games, onto Gamersgate, onto Steam, just something. Have them purchasable and, and preservable for future generations to come. That's it. Thanks so much, everybody, and I'll talk to you all soon.